Hi everyone, welcome to Train Forever. I'm Andrew Barr and today we're talking about exercise and blood pressure. Like most other chronic diseases and risk factors, exercise can be highly effective for both the prevention and management of high blood pressure. Almost all types of exercise have an effect. Some are more effective than others and others are more effective than you might think. Before we get into specifics, I think it's important to have an understanding of what blood pressure is, what constitutes normal and high blood pressure, and how blood pressure responds both acutely and chronically to exercise. Blood pressure is a measure of how much pressure there is in your circulatory system. Your circulatory system is quite complex, but for the purposes of today's discussion, you can think of it as a series of tubes, that's your arteries and veins, and a pump, which is your heart. There are two numbers in a measurement of blood pressure. The first number is called systolic pressure, and that's the pressure on the system when your heart is pumping. The second number is called diastolic pressure, and that's the pressure on the system when the heart relaxes. The greater either number, the more pressure there is on the system. The more pressure on the system, the harder your heart is working. Because the first number is the pressure on the system when the heart is pumping, it is always higher than the second number because that's the pressure on the system when the heart is relaxing. That first number, systolic pressure, can go much higher safely during exercise. Diastolic pressure, or the pressure during relaxation, never gets quite as high, and it becomes more of a problem if that number becomes chronically elevated. This is important to understand because normal or healthy blood pressure during rest and during exercise are very different. During exercise, you are working hard, therefore the heart is working hard, and the pressure on the system can be quite increased and therefore the blood pressure elevates. In a healthy person, this is completely fine and to be expected. In contrast, if you're relaxing on the couch, so you are resting and your heart should be resting, but your blood pressure remains elevated, that's a problem. The heart is designed to work, but if it never gets a chance to relax, as we see in chronically elevated blood pressure, that's when heart disease can develop. The main process through which blood pressure becomes elevated over time is a gradual hardening of the arteries. Lack of exercise aggravates this. When you exercise, that makes your heart pump hard and that requires that your arteries and veins expand and contract, and that keeps them healthy. Just like exercise requires your muscles to work hard, that keeps them healthy, the same is true for our circulatory system. If you're finding this content useful and informative, go ahead and give me a like and make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss another training tip. I'll be putting out a new video each week to help you get the most out of your training sessions. So what constitutes normal resting blood pressure? The number that most people are familiar with is 120 over 80. So that's 120 systolic over 80 diastolic. The guidelines were actually revised a few years ago. So rather than 120 over 80 being textbook perfect, it's actually now the upper limit of what is considered healthy or optimal. When resting systolic pressure is above 120, that is considered elevated blood pressure. And when that number gets above 130 to 139, combined with a diastolic reading of 80 to 89, that is considered stage one hypertension. When systolic is above 140, combined with diastolic being above 90, that is considered stage two hypertension. It's actually quite common for healthy people to have blood pressure that is quite a bit lower than 120 over 80. Um, this lower blood pressure is not inherently problematic. In fact, it's, it can be a great thing. It means that your heart can be truly relaxed at rest. It's only a problem if blood pressure does not rise to meet the intensity of the task when the person starts exercising or doing some other activity that requires exertion. What constitutes a safe or normal blood pressure response to exercise varies significantly depending on the person and the activity. In a healthy, young, trained person, we do not need to be concerned about the blood pressure increases in response to exercise, even though the numbers might go very high. McDougall and colleagues investigated a, the blood pressure response in a group of trained bodybuilders in response to a leg press exercise. They found that the mean or the average reading was 320 systolic over 250 diastolic, with the highest reading reported being 480 systolic over 350 diastolic with no adverse events recorded. Leave a comment and let me know what you think. Uh, if you have any insight or input uh, about blood pressure response to exercise, or if you just have a question about training, I'll be happy to answer everyone. I have to emphasize that these extremely high numbers seen in that study are only relevant to a fit, young, healthy, trained population. 
if you are at increased risk for any reason or if you have high blood pressure or if you're concerned about having high blood pressure, it's imperative that you speak with your doctor or work with a qualified exercise professional before making any changes to your physical activity or training routine. I do also want to mention that exercise, when properly facilitated, is very safe and that the risks associated with exercise are certainly less than the risks associated with not exercising. Researchers and regulatory bodies like the American Heart Association, the American College of Sports Medicine, and the Canadian Society of Exercise Physiology all agree that exercise can and should be a cornerstone therapy in the prevention and management of high blood pressure. Any type of exercise can have a beneficial effect on blood pressure. Aerobic exercise is the most effective, but strength training and even stretching can have positive effects also. For somebody who is not currently exercising, but is looking to start, the best place to start is most likely working towards the minimum physical activity guidelines, which is walking 30 minutes a day, five days a week, accumulated in bouts of 10 minutes or more. Once this threshold is reached, we can look at further increases in frequency, total exercise time, intensity, or adding in new activities. For somebody with a particular interest in exercising to manage or prevent high blood pressure, it makes more sense to increase frequency or the number of training sessions or walking sessions per week or total exercise time rather than increasing intensity. Even though intensity is very valuable and provides unique benefits, it does increase the risk of an adverse event in an exercise session for an at-risk individual more than those other two variables. This is one of those reasons why working with a qualified exercise professional is very important. These types of people can help design the progressions in a training program that safely progress an individual from not exercising to a pretty high safe threshold of exercise activity. Although aerobic exercise is the most effective form of exercise for the prevention and management of high blood pressure, resistance training or strength training can also play an important role. Corn Ellison and colleagues performed a meta-analysis on randomized control trials that investigated uh, various exercise interventions and their effect on blood pressure outcomes. They found that resistance training uh, reduced or helped control blood pressure in both normotensive, people with normal blood pressure, and hypertensive, people with high blood pressure, groups. Although they also noted that the reductions in blood pressure in the hypertensive groups were not statistically significant. However, and this is crucial, the authors did also note that the strength training interventions would consistently and significantly improve other related measures of cardiovascular or metabolic health. Things like VO2 max, body composition, waist circumference, and blood lipid profile. The takeaway is that although aerobic training is the most effective method for controlling blood pressure, that resistance training can also be helpful and it can help improve related measures of cardiovascular and metabolic health, which can have a secondary positive effect on blood pressure, even if the mechanisms aren't completely understood. There aren't actually agreed upon guidelines for the best way to design a strength training program for the purposes of controlling high blood pressure. But as with any discussion about exercise for the prevention and management of chronic disease, what we can do is start from the general guidelines for the healthy population, and then make modifications based on common sense and the available research. Stewart and colleagues conducted a randomized control trial on adults age 50 to 75 with mild untreated hypertension. The exercise protocol was for the most part quite standard. It consisted of three supervised exercise sessions per week with each session consisting of a stretching based warm up, a strength training period of time, and then aerobic training at the end. The strength training protocol was two sets of 10 to 15 reps at, and this is the key ingredient, 50% of predicted one rep max. This is quite a bit of a lower intensity than you would use with a low risk or otherwise healthy person. Uh, we know from established strength training guidelines that your 10 rep max is probably about 70% of your one rep max. So in this study, they were using 50%, a deliberate choice to significantly reduce intensity in the session to lower the risk of a, a acute adverse event while still ticking a lot of the standard exercise guideline boxes, right? Three sessions per week, uh, getting some flexibility, some strength training, and some aerobic training in there as well. But with just that one key modification to increase the safety profile of the scheduled workouts. 
This would be a good strategy for a person looking to become more active to help control their blood pressure. Sticking to similar frequencies and uh, exercise types as a lower risk person, but reducing the intensity, particularly in the strength training component. An important takeaway from the available research on strength training and uh, blood pressure is that uh, contrary to somewhat common belief that exercise or strength training does not chronically elevate blood pressure. The spikes in blood pressure in response to exercise are acute and that over time or chronically exercise should help control blood pressure and that if properly facilitated, once again, that the benefits of exercise do significantly outweigh the risks. Another way to think about this is that one of the major aggravating factors for having high blood pressure is an absence of exercise. So simply introducing exercise to a person should have a positive effect on blood pressure, never mind countless other indispensable health benefits. If you are interested in becoming more active to help control your blood pressure, that is awesome. Step one is to talk with your doctor and then ideally connect with a qualified exercise professional who can help you get the most out of your efforts while also minimizing risk and keeping you safe. But also bear in mind, and I'm taking this directly from the American Heart Association website, do not be afraid to become more active. Exercise uh, has a ton of health benefits and the risks of not exercising are very real. I hope you thought today's video was useful, and if you did, please give me a like and make sure you hit subscribe so you never miss another training tip. I'll be putting out a new video each week to help you get the most out of your training sessions. If you head to the description, you can get my free guide for building core strength, and you can also get my training programs designed specifically for beginners, one to be done at the gym, and one that could be done at home. You can also find more information about working with me online too. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week.